So now we have our video, we've added our text. The next thing we have to do is save it. So to save it as a GIF, go up to File, Export, Save for Web. We're going to Save for Web using the legacy features that Photoshop has. That opens up this new module with different options for saving your images. Up in the top right, you have your presets. So if you click that and then scroll up, you have these different GIF options. So you have GIF 128 dithered, GIF 128 no dithered, and then the same for GIF 32 and 30, 64. What the 32, 64, or 128 refer to are the amount of colors that will be exported in this GIF exported or saved. I say exported because I'm coming from a video world. That's what we say when we save our video projects, but you can think of it as saving. So if I choose 60, 32, I'll show you what it looks like. With this image, it's not as bad because there's not many colors in this image, but you can see it starts to get a little distorted down here. If I go to another point in this GIF, so let me just click cancel, move my timeline right about here. This will probably be a pretty good point for you to see that. File, export, save for web. And then you go up to GIF, 32 dithered. You'll see it better this time as it loads. There's just less colors and it's still loading. But so they basically only have 32 colors that they use. So you can see the reds, the browns, and it really lumps the colors together. If I do 128, you'll see that it looks more normal, like a normal video because it includes more points and more colors in this GIF. Dithered versus non-dithered. Dithered means that it's more blended. Non-dithered, you can see as I did that, the edges become a little bit more harsh. So I typically do dithered. The other thing is you can see the the um, size estimate down here. So it says that this is going to be 5.647 megabytes. So if you want to decrease that size, you can go from a higher 128 to something lower. So maybe let's try 64. So now that's 4.322 megabytes. If we need it to be even smaller, we can change the size. So over here under image size, we can change this to say 400 and then click somewhere else so that it loads that preset and it's going to actually show up as what we're looking at. So now it's 2.791 megabytes. So there's different ways to basically change the, the size of your GIF, which is important when uploading online. You can also adjust all these things custom wise up here with the colors, the amount of dither, etc. Those are the two options that you really need to worry about. The other thing down here that you do need to worry about is this looping option. So right now it's set at once and that's going means that it's going to play once and then it's going to be done. But we typically want our GIFs to repeat so we're going to say forever. So now how do we know if this works? Well we can preview it down here or we can actually preview it in on the web by clicking this preview button down here. So it's going to optimize it for your browser. So this is actually how it's going to look like when someone, when you put it online, when you put it in an article, when you put it in an email, how to break bread. Pretty cool. So when we come back to Photoshop, we can just click save. We're just going to save to our desktop. We're going to call this bread GIF. Click save again. And then now let's go over to our finder or your documents, go to our desktop. We have our bread GIF, and there we have it, a new GIF all about breaking, baking bread, and it repeats, it loops infinitely. So that's how you create a GIF, and you add text to it, so you can do that multiple ways. You could add multiple layers of text, you could change up the text, you could add different videos to this just by doing the same process of dropping new video clips onto this timeline, or basically as a new layer, and moving it around on the timeline. So you can do lots of things with video right in Photoshop itself. Let me know if you have any questions. Otherwise, we'll see you in another video.